All right, so in my last video, I talked to you about Dijkstra's classic paper about the go-to statement being a bad thing. So hopefully that convinced you that you should never be using a go-to statement. But today I'm gonna look at a couple of very specialized cases where it just might be okay to use a go-to statement. Let's go look at the source code for the Linux kernel. The source code for the Linux kernel has more than 13,000 go-to statements. So what's going on? Are kernel programmers just not good programmers? Are they disregarding well-known advice? Turns out, if you look closer at the use of the go-to statement in the Linux kernel, it mostly follows a very common pattern, and that is the pattern of quickly going to an exit. So you see over here what's happening is it tests some condition and then quickly goes to a cleanup or an exit. Same thing here, same thing here, and so on. And you'll see this pattern repeated over and over again. If we go look at this case, once again, we see that the go-to is used for a quick exit in case there is an error. And this pattern is really prevalent in the Linux kernel. Now, the use of the go-to statement in the Linux kernel has had quite a lot of debate. Uh, someone was nice enough to actually archive this entire debate on their web page, and here it is. Now, let's look at some of the points and counterpoints made by various people in this thread. It all starts off with someone writing to the mailing list saying, you know, you really shouldn't be using the go-to statement. There are better ways to write programs. And boy, did that spark a lot of debate. Here is Linus Torvalds, the author of the Linux kernel, the original author of the Linux kernel, weighing in, saying that I think go-tos are fine and they are often more readable than large amounts of indentation. And then in classic Thorvald style, he hurls a few insults at people and languages that disagree with him. And this goes on for pages and pages and pages. Let's just say that the two sides agree to disagree and the Linux kernel still has a lot of go-tos. I'll put a link to this if you're interested. Now here's the second very specialized case in which go-to's might actually be justified because of the performance. This construct is called a computed go-to and it is a very commonly used pattern when you're writing language interpreters. But basically when you're writing an interpreter of some sort, the, the high level structure for the interpreter is one giant switch statement and depending on which opcode or which interpreter statement or which language statement you're currently looking at, your giant switch statement executes different code to compute the logic for that particular statement. Now this is fine, but you can actually optimize this a little bit. And this is what's called computed go-to's. The central idea behind computed go-to's is that the target of the go-to is not a static compile time label, but it's computed based on, a, on an expression that's computed at runtime. And then what you essentially have is a dispatch table of addresses and your interpreter computing addresses of go-to's. You know, the computed go-to version is about 25% faster, which is pretty significant. We also see this pattern being used in, in the Python interpreter. So here I'm looking at ceval.c, which is the, the, central, the central interpreter loop in the C Python implementation. Here I'm looking at, here I'm looking at ceval.c, which is the central loop in the Python C implementation. And they use computed go-tos over here as well. And there's this long comment which explains what it is and why they're doing it. And here it is. 
they get a 15 to 20 percent performance improvement by using computed go tos here so those were two very specialized cases when it just might be okay to use the go to statement in most cases if you're writing code you really should avoid it thanks and i'll see you next time